Good morning, and welcome to the United Church of Clinton. We hope you have come for some quiet reflection and companionship as we worship the Lord. For announcements, we have uh, Shrove Tuesday on March 1st from 5 to 7 with pancake dinner provided by the Youth Council, and takeout is an option. The next day, March 2nd, is Ash Wednesday. We will be having an in-person service at 7 p.m. March 3rd is Social Justice Meeting. It will be held at 6.30 via Zoom. Offerings can be dropped in the bins by the door, sent through the mail to the church office, or through our website by clicking on the Donate button at the top of the screen. Any virtual worshipers with prayer concerns should post them to comments on Facebook. And the earlier the better to make sure we get them in time. Any other announcements? And let the worship begin. Please join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> when I think of God's presence in the world, I am grateful. Grateful, grateful for the presence of hope, grateful, grateful for the gift of life. And when I think of God's presence in my life, I am humbled. Humbled, humbled by, by the gift of grace, humbled, humbled by the invitation to begin again. again. And when I think of God's presence in this community, I am glad. Glad, glad to be surrounded by holy people, people worshiping God. our holy God. Thank, Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, God. Our first song this morning is number 592 in the hymnal. It is Every Time I Feel the Spirit, and the words are also in the back of the bulletin, which you have in the sanctuary, or welcome virtual worshipers. You will find them on the order of worship that could be downloaded. So, shall we raise the spirit with every time I feel the spirit? Thank you, Laura. I will. 
will pray. I have heartache, I have woe, I have trouble here below. While God leads me, I'll not fear, I am sheltered by God's care. Please join me in the prayer of the day. We hope and believe that prayer changes things, and we pray for change in the world, that poverty would be changed into abundance, that anger and fear would be changed into compassion and trust. We hope that prayer changes us too, that prejudice would change into humility, that bones will mend and hearts that are broken would become stronger in their scars. That mourning would, at the right time, turn into dancing. So we offer you our prayers today, those spoken ones and those unspoken ones that have settled into our hearts, if not yet our voices. Amen. Amen. And now it is that time when we pass the peace of Christ to one another. Um, Laura will play Peace Be With You twice, and then we will immediately follow with the Gloria Patri. Thank you, Laura. Peace be with you. This morning is from Exodus 34, 29 through 35, the shining face of Moses. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterwards, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with him, he put a veil on his face, but whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went to speak to him again. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, hear our prayer for the mending of our hearts torn apart by our unkindness, for the healing of our souls wasting away from the despair around us, for the forgiveness we seek for the sin we have allowed to persist, for the reconciliation of the world whose division condemns us. We pray for the courage to admit our fault the strength to amend our actions, and the hope that your grace awaits us. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. My friends, God is not done with us, not by a long shot. You are more beloved than you can ever know, and God is working in you and in the world beyond our wildest imagining. The beginning of all this is forgiveness. So know that you are indeed forgiven and be at peace. Amen. For the child in each of us, I want to get you to think back to when you've been on a high place, whether it's climbing a tree or climbing a hill, or if you're lucky enough to have parents take you up an actual mountain, it is a new perspective. You can see further. You can see the world in a way that you don't normally see it. And I want you to think about that the mountaintops experience that is in both of our readings today. Think about how it makes you feel to be at a high place, seeing things differently. Let's and to move on to the next song. And to continue with moments of reflection, so let us now join together and sing Holy Ground, which is number 112 in our hymnals, or the words are printed in the back of the bulletin, or will appear on the screen for the virtual worshippers. Please be comfortable if you wish to stand, or if you would prefer to remain seated. We will sing this twice through in a, peer, in a mood of reflection. Thank you, Alana. I mean, Laura. <laughs> prayer request from anyone. And at this moment, 
I'm also looking at the live stream to see if our virtual worshippers have prayer concerns too. Anyone have joys, glimpses of God? Hmm. Kelly? So we can associate. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Two new babies. <laughs> so, so Kelly, your sister's name is Kim. Kim. Okay. And Rachel. Okay, and Rachel is the other mother. Yeah. So two new babies: uh, Kelly's sister, Kim, and the wife of her previous minister. Rachel, a, a, a daughter. Okay, I'm sorry, it's grand. You're right, granddaughters, grandbabies. Anyone else? My friends Jeremy and his wife Danielle had a baby girl yesterday. Her name is Delilah Willow Mallard. I just have to say this day is, the days after a snowstorm, it comes down and always the following day is blue, blue sky, white, white snow. It just takes your breath away. It's a beautiful thing even if you're not a skier. Are we ready to go to the Lord in prayer? Dear God, Please hold all of Europe in your grace. They are once again facing war. Give them strength and wisdom and willingness to find a road to peace. We give thanks that we're removed from it, but acknowledge that everyone is impacted when things like this go on in the world. We rejoice in the recent snowfall and the beauty it lends to the landscape. <coughs> we rejoice that it'll melt pretty quick, too. We give Joyce for new babies. It seems that there's many of them at this time, which is a wonderful thing. Give us all the strength to do your will, follow your guidance, and come to you whenever we need you knowing that you will be there. All this we pray, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The next scripture reading, similar to the Old Testament Exodus reading, we've again got a mountaintop and a transfiguration and the impact that that transfiguration has on those who see it. Luke chapter 9 verses 28 to 36. Now about eight days after these sayings Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzlingly white. 
Suddenly, they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now, Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said. That's Peter. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them. And they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. I know Marilyn likes to start with jokes. These may not be holy humor, but they're about mountains, so I like them. Now, these are puns. I'll start with the best ones, and when the groans dominate, I'll stop. What world-famous rock group has four guys that don't even sing? Bingo. You've heard this one before. The presidential candidate died while climbing a mountain last week. Their opponent won by a... (laughs) A group of thirsty hikers stumbled across a crystal clear mountain stream and decided to take a drink. Alas, each of them got sick as a result. The life lesson? Never judge a brook by its color. Maybe we'll stop there. (laughs) Why can't you play hide-and-seek with mountains? They always peak. All right. First, I want to thank the Worship Planning Committee for coming up with two readings involving mountains, mountaintops. Personally, I find mountaintops to be spiritually uplifting. But what is this transfiguration thing, and why is it important? Let's start with some definitions. Transfiguration, complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful or spiritual state. Let's compare that to a more common term, transformation. Again, a change of form, appearance, or, in in transformation's case, character. The difference is that transformation is complete, an improvement, more beautiful or spiritual, and external, the form or appearance, not character. But still, how can an external appearance be all that important? Lawrence Richard's commentary on the New Testament Thank you, Edie, wherever you are, for passing that on to me. Points out that this part of Luke's gospel is focused on the importance of the characters in the good news making a decision concerning Jesus. Some were just swept away with acceptance and belief in him. Others were challenging, questioning How does a transfiguration impact decision-making? How could what the Hebrews in the Old Testament and the apostles in the New saw in their leaders' appearance have been so inspiring that it gelled their faith and their willingness to follow? Well, I once witnessed a transfiguration on a cloud-covered mountain 
That transformed my decision. The entire drive north from Bangor, Tim and I could see, a different Tim, could see a single mountain in the distance that was always in the clouds, while those around it were clear. Sure enough, that was Katahdin, our destination. The next day, as we backpacked into Chimney Pond, those coming down from the peak were wet and miserable. They had hiked over slippery rocks in driving rain and sleet to stand in the howling wind, unable to see the person next to them, much less a view. At the pond, we could see the pond and the campground around it, but just above our heads was a thick cloud hiding the mountain. It looked like it was going to be a quick turnaround the next morning. During the night, the wind and rain stopped. The temperature rose to almost 50 degrees. When I went to the pond to get water for breakfast, I saw a bluebird sky and a transfigured mountain. It was not transformed. It was the same massive piece of granite that it had been since my childhood. But its appearance had been transfigured with the rising sun glittering off the ice-covered summit. It was so inspiring, I decided to hike the knife edge for the first time in 40 years. In the gospel reading, Peter was there to see the transfiguration, and he retold that story for the rest of his life. It may be what transformed him into the rock on which the church was built. When we discuss spirituality, we often downplay appearances as not being as essential as what is inside. But an appearance is not just something out there. It comes from an act of seeing. The observer takes part in the creation of the appearance. What we see can have a visceral impact on us, far more powerful than any logic. They do say seeing is believing. In the weeks and months ahead, we will be asked to explore how we see this church, how we want our community to see this church. Will the church be transfigured in our eyes? How will that change us? How will that affect what we decide to become? Stay tuned. So members of the ensemble would like to share music that you may be very familiar with. It's called I Believe. Um, before we start to sing, because if you go on YouTube, you will see so many people have recorded this. You may be very familiar with it yourself. So although it says in the bulletin, the ensemble, this is an open invitation to everyone here in the sanctuary and to all our virtual worshipers to join in the singing of I Believe. And as we do so, what I find really wonderful is it is such a personal declaration of faith and it will mean different things. And the one pronoun you hear is I, 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 all the way through. But before we start to sing, I do want to introduce some of the members of the ensemble who come and practice at nine o'clock each Sunday. So here is Bailey McNamara, here is Tim Riley, and here is Alana. So, for all of us, I believe. Thank you, Laura. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe somewhere in the darkest night, a candle glows. I believe for everyone. 
this invitation to the offering. Some of, us, some of us want to give, but have no idea how. Giving takes many shapes, but like any spiritual discipline, the key is for that gift to grow. We grow in our knowledge of God. We grow in our faith. If we aren't already, May we not seek to grow in our giving as well. In time, in the time we give, in the money we give, in the love we give. Let us ponder this growth and may God shine his light in us so that nothing can hold us back from this growth. Is God from whom all blessings flow? Praise the Lord, all creatures here below. Praise God above, ye heavenly host, Creator, Christ, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please join me in the dedication prayer. God of all this, all we have, all we are, we give these gifts knowing that they will give so much more. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Our final song this morning, in keeping with this being Transfiguration Sunday, and thank you for the wonderful messages today, Bob. They were wonderful. Um, so our last one is Shine, Jesus, Shine. And we will be singing all the verses. You'll find them in the back of the bulletin or on the screen if you are a virtual worshipper. Laura will begin with an introduction and we will start with the refrain. Thank you, Laura. Shine, Jesus, Shine. Shining in the midst of the darkness, shining, 
Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Bless your nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. darkness shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine fill this land with the father's glory blaze spirit blaze set our hearts on